If we head towards the future, when we may be facing water shortages, we must ensure that every single drop counts. This is why it is so important that we take action now. And that is where Copernicus LSTN mission comes in. It is specifically designed to optimize agricultural water use and to help manage water resources more effectively and more sustainably. When it comes to sustain our planet, few things are more important than the intersection of these two elements, water and agriculture. And we're really breaking ground here from the point of view of European technology development. Together with the European Commission, we are building a dedicated Copernicus mission to give us the tool, the science and the data that we need to prepare and adapt our agriculture and water sectors for the future climate and environmental conditions. My name is Anna Bolea Lamagnac and I am the project manager of the LSTM mission within the Copernicus program in ISA. With Copernicus LSTM, we are going to measure very precisely the variability of a parameter called land surface temperature, hence the name of our mission, LSTM. Effectively, this is the temperature of the skin of the Earth where most biological processes take place. And we will do that on a truly global scale. Imagine that you have a scatter over the surface of the land in every corner of this planet, a thermometer every 30 to 50 meters apart. If you think about it, this will be in fact a remarkable number of thermometers, more precisely, tens of billions of them. Imagine now that you can read all those thermometers during each day, every day, continuously and reliably. It sounds like an intensive care unit, doesn't it? And in fact, it is. It turns out that temperature is in fact the key metric of a specific process taking place continuously on the skin of the Earth, which is called evapotranspiration. Uh, my name is Elias Manolis. I'm uh, the payload manager of the LSTM mission. Therefore, I'm the instrument responsible. Evapotranspiration is the combined process of water evaporation and water transpiration through the plants and towards the atmosphere. It is an essential mechanism to secure the well-being of our plants. This metric is key to understanding how much water is being consumed by plants and how much is evaporating from the soil. This is also one of the most important indicators of land degradation, which is unfortunately progressing at an alarming rate. In Europe alone, during the last two decades, we have been severely affected by droughts due to low precipitation, high evaporation and heat waves. It is estimated that around 4.5% of Europe territory has been affected by this. And this number goes up to 20% in the very dry years in certain countries. This drought affects the yield in croplands and has devastating impact in the wetlands, grasslands and forests. In addition, the increasing water demand for agricultural purposes due to this low precipitation and heat waves put an additional stress on these delicate ecosystems which are essential to maintain our biodiversity and have a high potential for capturing CO2. This is a dangerous vicious cycle that we shall all strive to break. And the projections for the future are even more concerning. Climate change is expected to make these type of droughts more frequent, longer and more severe. Agricultural water scarcity is expected to increase in more than 80% of the world's crop lands by 2050. You can imagine what sort of devastating consequence this may have on agricultural productivity, land value, water availability, biodiversity, and even on the financial markets and European and global economy. When we use satellites to measure properties of the Earth, we use a technique called remote sensing. What this means for LSTM is that we need to measure the temperature of the surface of the Earth, by the way, do this very accurately, while flying at several hundred kilometers away from it, simply by looking at it. The way we achieve this is by measuring the light, which is self-emitted from the surface of the Earth. The kind of light which is the most important for LSTM is not the one which is visible with the naked eye, but rather it is the one located in what we call the thermal infrared part of the radiation spectrum. Those that have ever used night goggles are familiar with that. The hotter the target is, the more thermal infrared light it emits, and the spectral content of it varies depending on its temperature. And this is how we detect temperature remotely. 
The mission and the instrument of the Copernicus LSTM are incredibly powerful and will enable us to gather valuable observations in ways that were previously not possible. The data will be provided at a high resolution, 30 to 50 meters, to correspond to the level of the individual agricultural fields. This is one order of magnitude better than any other operational mission offering similar revision times. And for temperatures in the range of minus 70 degrees Celsius to more than 180 degrees Celsius, with an accuracy better than one degree. In addition, we will be able to detect relative temperature change of a fraction of a degree. By enable observation with such a precision, it will be possible to understand the variation of water consumption in a different types of crops. My name is Ithia Barat, and I'm the System and Operations Manager in the LSTN mission. The thermal infrared observations allow the detection of water stress in plants days or even weeks before it becomes visible to the human eye. This is a truly remarkable accuracy, which can be achieved through an instrument operating at an altitude of 650 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Imagine standing at the top of the Eiffel Tower and observing, simply by looking at it, if the temperature on the Tower of London has dropped by a small fraction of a degree. This is the kind of distance and precision we are talking about. But to make a real difference, this information needs to be available systematically, on a day-to-day -day basis, to every single farmer that wants to use it. This is why we designed the Copernicus LSTM as a system of two identical satellites, which will fly in a constellation. In this way, we will be able to provide data every one to three days, depending on the clouds coverage, with a local observation around midday over Europe. That is exactly the time of the highest heat stress for the crops. Note that frequent measurements of the same target on Earth is essential if we are going to monitor evapotranspiration with a high level of confidence. To accomplish such a frequent revisit time with the two satellites in orbit, Copernicus LSTM will have an exceptional waist swath of about 700 kilometers. None of the existing satellites offer this kind of capability at the special resolution of LSTM. All of this implies, of course, a huge complexity for the instrument, both from a technological point of view, but also in terms of its optical, mechanical, thermal and electrical design. The scientific instrument on board the Copernicus LSTM is called the Land Surface Temperature Radiometer. The core part of the instrument is its thermal sensor, which detects radiation in five different thermal bands. The instrument will also measure light in several other bands in the visible and shortwave infrared part of the spectrum. These will be complementary measurements that will significantly enhance the thermal product of the mission and support additional products for the end users. We will be able to observe light in 11 spectral bands in total, ranging from the visible to the thermal infrared wavelengths. There are three separate detector units in the instrument, two of which will need to be operated in cryogenic conditions. Each of those units features tens of thousands of individual sensor elements, pixels, all of which will need to be read in an orchestrated manner at an incredible speed of once every quarter of a millisecond. In practice, this means that every single second, we collect and process with our instrument almost 100 millions of observations, all of them well calibrated and with an excellent signal-to-noise ratio. The second big challenge is, of course, the instrument optical design. Physics tells us that the sizing of such an instrument is proportional to the wavelength of the light it measures. Operating our instrument in thermal infrared wavelengths, which are 10 times longer than visible wavelengths, in practice means that we need approximately 10 times larger optics to meet similar performances that we would do with a visible radiometer. Another tricky challenge relates to the pointing stability of the instrument, because exactly of its very wide swath, the only way possible to observe the Earth in this mission is using a large scanning mirror. As we fly over the Earth with a speed of approximately 7 kilometers per second, at the same time, we scan from one side of the swath 
to the other, thus approximately 700 kilometers within less than five seconds. This means that all those tens of millions of measurements we collect in those few seconds, every time we make a single swipe of the swath, we need to know where exactly they are located on the Earth's surface, and we need to know within a few meters, while being at 650 kilometers away from it. The design that the LSTM satellite will embark is truly pioneering. Let's say that you are a farmer and you want to know how much water your crops need. With the data from Copernicus LSTM mission, you can know exactly how much water your crops are using and when they need to be irrigated. You will be able to adjust your irrigation schedules to precisely match the water your crops need. You might say that this is like having a personal assistant telling you every day when your crops are thirsty. In some areas, it will be possible to double or even triple the harvest from the same land. Copernicus LSTN will make it all possible from a space as part of the bigger Copernicus program infrastructure. We are really at the brink of something truly transformational. It will be the first mission that will be provide operational, frequent, precise and calibrated observations and enable a completely new way of understanding and managing our water resources and how we grow the food in the future. The Copernicus LSTN mission is primarily designed to monitor and manage the so-called high temperature events which can have a devastating impact on land and water ecosystems. But with the thermal infrared instrument, we can also measure soil composition, which is important for identifying soil health and nutrient deficiencies. This can, for example, help the farmers to optimize the use of fertilizers. This means less pollution associated with the use of chemical inputs and a healthier food. Additionally, Copernicus LSTM can advise on the urban heat island effect which is an excess heat generated in city areas. This is important for managing heat stress in urban environments. And for example, project energy consumption for the electric power stations, and generally enable smart urban development. In addition, these thermal observations will help to protect cryosphere health, permafrost, glacier lakes, coastlines, and coral reefs, as all of these ecosystems are sensitive to temperature change and we can monitor them much more effectively with the data from the Copernicus LSTN constellation. There are so many practical benefits of the mission. We truly believe that everyone should have the chance to learn about them and prepare for the future opportunity to create new applications based on LSTM data. These state-of-the-art satellites and their instruments are in fact designed by our industrial team that is led by Airbus Spain in Madrid as Satellite Prime and Airbus France in Toulouse as instrument responsible. Each of them are leading a consortium of more than 30 different industrial partners from 18 different countries in Europe. And around 30% of these companies are SMEs. And we are getting ready for the launch in early 2029. It will be a highly gratifying moment for all engineers here in ESA and scientists, but also for all industry partners who have worked on the project. Witnessing their mission successfully launch into orbit and providing data to the people on the ground that can turn it into useful services is always something that we look forward to. LSTM is here not only to monitor the devastating effects of climate change, but is here to act now to alleviate such effects and guarantee a sustainable economic growth. We are not only helping future generations, we are helping ourselves.